Guys, welcome back to another episode of Edge Master Gaming, and today we're going to be covering, as the title mentions, the world's first ever perfect game. So what is the perfect game exactly, you ask? It's simply this. When you have the same amount of headshots as you do kills in the later rounds. Pretty simple, right? What gave me the idea was when I was recording my world's worst loadout video, and the amount of headshots that I was able to accomplish was pretty good. On top of that, shortly after the video was released, one of you guys left me a comment saying, and I'm paraphrasing here, Edge, next time, why don't you try to do a headshots only challenge? So I gladly accepted. You're probably thinking this is virtually impossible, but if that were the case, I wouldn't be putting out this video now, would I? Anyway, so I decided to make a little challenge for myself, and here are the rules. Number one, no nukes allowed. I could not under any circumstances use a nuke to kill a single zombie. Number two, I had to make it to round 40. I mean, that's my usual goal on these challenges, so why stop now, right? And last but not least, number three, no hacking. What kind of challenge would this be if I hacked my way to glory? I don't understand why people exploit this game because it takes away from the fun to be honest, but to each his own. Anyway, as always, before we get started, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below if you like the Roblox content on this channel. Make sure to also check out the description for timestamps of this video and other awesome links for Edge Master Gaming below. All right guys, let's get started. To begin, Similar to my last video on the worst loadout, we're using the SKS for the first phase of this challenge. If you don't remember why, here's a quick refresher. Number one, this gun one shots to round 19. Number two, we'll use it to farm all the points we need for all the perks and weapons. And lastly, this challenge requires very high accuracy so that 75% reduction in recoil will come in handy. Next, I want to address how I'm going to approach this challenge in the later rounds. I fear that automatic weapons are going to ruin my chances of getting a perfect, so I'm just going to go ahead and avoid them altogether. So that means that we are not going to take any SMGs, LMGs, burst shot weapons, or weapons that spread like shotguns, and definitely no weapons that perform splash damage. It's round 5 and to ensure that I increase my chances of getting headshots, I try to aim for anywhere between the eyes and the top of the head on each zombie, as this seems to have better results. On round 6, we just simply try to gather enough points to collect the Juggernaug and pack the SKS. We're downstairs here on round 7. Be mindful of multiple zombies that come down the steps. Since you have piercing, there's a chance that you may hit the zombie in the rear when attempting to perform a headshot. This also includes multiple zombies that climb over barricades, especially if you have insta-kill on. It's round 8 and I'm so tempted to use the knife right now. So next we get our speed cola perk. Needless to say that we're just going to sit up here and farm for the rest of these early rounds. It's now round 17 and after getting enough points, I decided that it was time to gather the weapons needed to make it to the rest of the way. First, we have the main weapon to carry us through the next phase, the SL9SD. This gun has a high rate of fire, plus can one shot up to round 31 and carries a ton of ammunition. Most of all, it too has a high accuracy rate with little to no recoil. Another gun that would have been suitable for this is the MSSR, which you can only get with the M16 expansion pack. Next gun in our arsenal is the Dragonoff SVU. This gun can one shot up to round 43, it can reload a bullet in the chamber thanks to its pack module, has no recoil, has piercing, but unfortunately it doesn't carry much ammunition in reserves. This is our backup if we ever get into a jam. Our last and final weapon is the Op. I guess you can call this our backup of the backup. This gun also doesn't have much ammo, but it really packs a punch. No pun intended, I swear. Either way, it can one shot up to round 50, so in theory, this should work. Another weapon that we could have used and isn't bad for this challenge is the Deagle. It's now round 19, and while farming at this spot in the library, make sure that you do your best to keep this barricade up. 
This is just to ensure that the zombies can't sneak up behind you very easily. As the zombies get stronger and move closer to you, just make sure to continuously aim up at the head as often as possible. On round 21, and oh my goodness, here we go. We gotta avoid this thing like COVID. Okay, this is ridiculous. The Project Lazarus gods must be getting desperate. Seriously. Moving ahead a bit on round 28, I just wanted to show this quick sequence while training. Make sure that you don't spend too much time sniping. Just run and gun, meaning take anywhere between two to four shots since you can get overrun at this point if you're not careful. It's round 31 guys and I want to show you a quick highlight on when to use the dragon off in backup situations. If you ever get into a situation where you can't cut over to the other side of the room to train, just take the train toward the speed cola room, lining them up for headshots like you see here. And when you're done, just simply return back to the library to continue training. Rather than subject you guys to the never ending amount of zombie training, let's just go ahead and skip to the next highlight. It's now round 38 and I do want to call your attention to this very scary moment that I had while I was training. Look at that. So rather than taking any chances of possibly shooting a zombie in the torso, I decided that it would be best to run around the map to group all the zombies in a straight line and then kill them at the top of the steps here. It's round 39 folks and I began using the op a bit more since the SO9 was no longer cutting it. Then this nuke dropped in the most inconvenient place. Why oh why. Anyway, as a result I then led the train away and almost got surrounded here. It's a good thing that I had the op at the ready. At this point I figured I could go around the map and the nuke would be gone by the time I got back. Take a look at the action here. Thank you. 
It's round 40 guys and congratulations to you if you made it this far in the video watching all the way through. While I achieved my goal, I have you guys to thank for all the encouragement to keep producing the Project Lazarus content on this channel. Thank you all for the support. So while we're here, why don't we raise the stakes just a little bit? Let's do a bonus round, shall we? A few moments later. Here are some extras that you may have missed from other attempts at performing this challenge. Let's see how many times I can get the ray gun in one game. That's one, two, three, four, five. Five times in one game. I can never be this lucky if I were actually trying to get the ray gun. Of all the places they could have dropped this thing, why here? Oh my goodness. All right, just five more rounds to go. What? Wait, no, no, no! And as always, guys, remember to have fun, take care, and God bless.